Hello everyone, you're welcome to this lesson. In this video, you are going to solve this question I have here. So the question says you should use superpositions theorem to find the current values i1, i2, i3, and i4. So let's look at how you are going to solve this question. So we have two power sources here, which is the 10 volts voltage source and then the 15 amperes current source. So what you are going to do is that we will consider each of the power sources acting alone. Okay, then we will calculate for the various current values. Then after we are done, we will sum up the values we will get when we consider the various power sources. Okay, then those values, the sum of those values will give us what the actual current values that we want. So we will start by considering the 10 volts voltage source acting alone. Okay. So when you do that, let's look at how the circuit is going to look like. So I'm going to have one resistor here. Have another resistor here. This is the 10 volt voltage source. Okay, and then we have one resistor here too. And then another resistor here. Okay. So when you are considering the voltage source, what you are going to do is that you are going to open circuit the current source. Okay, so there will be no current source. Okay, so you have the two ohms here, you have eight ohms here, you have six ohms here, and three ohms here. Okay, so let me indicate the direction of the current. This current here will be going this direction, which is I1, and then you are going to have I2. In this direction and then i3 in this direction and then i4 in this direction okay so now let's look at how you are going to find the various current values to do this you must calculate for the total current flowing through the circuit okay and also before you can calculate for the total current you must know the total resistance so let's focus on finding the total resistance so you can see that this 8 ohms here and these 3 ohms will be in series because this side is open circuit. Okay, so for that reason, we are going to have 8 plus 3 and this will give us 11 ohms. Okay, and this 11 ohms will be in parallel with the 6 ohms here. So you are going to have 11 parallel 6. This will be equal to 11 times 6 divided by 11 plus 6. This will give us a value of 3.88 ohms. Okay, and this 3.88 ohms will be in series with what these two ohms here. Okay, so at the end, we are going to have 2 plus 3.88. Okay, that's for the total resistance. And then that will be equal to what? 5.88. So we can find the current I to be equal to V over R, which will be equal to the 10 volt over 5.88. And this will give us a value of what? 1.7 amperes. Okay, so this will be the current that will flow through these two ohms here and then this 3.88 ohms. Okay, so we know that the current flowing through the two ohms is labeled as what i1 okay so our i1 e okay will be equal to 1.7 amperes okay and now the current flow into the 3.88 will also be what 1.1 1.7 and then we know we got the 3.88 as a result of what the 11 and then the 6 ohms being in parallel okay so we are going to have a circuit like this. Let me redraw a circuit for that. We're going to have a circuit like this. It is what you are going to have. Okay. Then the current that will be coming towards this this node here. Okay, will be the 1.7 amperes. Okay. And we have our six ohms here, and then we have the 11 ohms here okay but you know we got this 11 ohms okay by combining what the 8 which is this 8 and what this 3 okay so we come and split the 11 to back 
after we are done finding the current flowing through the six ohms okay the current flowing through the six ohms is our i2 okay so let's find i2 i2 will be equal to 1.7 amperes times 11 over 11 plus 6 okay let's find the value we have 1.7 times 11 over 11 plus 6 that gives us a value of 1.1 amperes so i2 will be equal to 1.1 amperes okay so this will be i2a okay so let me write it here i2a be equal to 1.1 amperes okay so the remaining current will flow through the 11 ohms so that will be i11 that will be equal to 1.7 amperes minus what 1.1 to give us a value for 0 0.6 amperes okay so that will be the current flowing through the 11 but we know that the 11 ohms we got that value as a result of what adding the 8 ohms and then the 3 ohms okay so what that means is that the current flowing through the 8 ohms and then the 3 ohms will also be what 0.6 amperes okay so our i3 a will be 0.6 amperes and then i4 a will also be 0.6 amperes okay this is what we have okay so now let's consider the current source acting alone so now i'm going to consider the 15 amperes acting alone okay so let's look at the direction of the current i'm going to have i4 okay to be in this direction and then we will have i3 to be in this direction and then i2 okay will be in this direction and then i1 will be in this direction okay so this is the circuit we have when we are considering the current source acting alone okay so you see that we short circuited the voltage source so we don't have any voltage source in the circuit so now let's calculate for the current values okay in this circuit here okay so to do this what i'll do is that i'm going to reduce this connection i have here okay i'm going to reduce this connection here so you can see that the two and then the six ohms will be in parallel okay so we have 2 parallel 6 okay that would be equal to 2 times 6 divided by what 2 plus 6 okay let's see what you're going to get for that 2 times 6 divided by 2 plus 6 that gives us a value of 1.5 ohms okay and this 1.5 ohms will be in series with what this 8 ohms here okay so you are going to have this 8 ohms okay is the same thing so you are going to have 1.5 plus what 8 ohms okay this will be equal to 9.5 ohms okay so now at this point i'm going to redraw the circuit okay so we are going to have something like this okay so this will be my 9.5 ohms this will be the 3 ohms okay and then we are going to have the 15 amperes coming from this direction okay so this was this is my i4 okay and then let's name this i9.5 okay so let me just put i there okay so which will be the current flowing through the 9.5 ohms okay so now we can use the current division rule to find the current flowing through the 3 ohms resistor which is what i4 so i4 will be equal to the 15 amperes times 9.5 divided by 9.5 plus 3 okay so let's see what you're going to get 15 times 9.5 divided by 9.5 plus 3 so this will give us a value of what 11.4 amperes okay all right so now we have i4 b okay to be equal to let me write this here we have i4 b okay to be equal to 11.4 amperes okay all right 
So now the current I'll be playing to the 9.5 ohms here will be the current value that will be remaining when you subtract this from the 15 amperes. Okay, so that will be 15 minus 11.4. And it's 11 point oh, that gives us a value for 3.6. So the current that will be flowing through the 9.5 will be 3.6. So that will be I. I will be equal to 3.6 amperes. Okay. And we know we got the 9.5. Okay. So it's also for the 1.5 here. And then this 8 ohms being in what series? Okay. So that means is that the current flowing to the 8 ohms will be. 3.6 and then the current flowing to the 1.5 ohms will also be 3.6. Okay, and then we know the current flowing through the 8 ohm to be I3. So we are going to have I3 be to be equal to what 3.6 amperes. Okay, so now it's left with I1 and then I2. Okay, so we know we got 1.5 as a result of what these two ohms and then 6 ohms being what parallel. Okay. So that means you are going to have a circuit like this. You have this kind of circuit, something like this. So this will be our circuit. Okay. So from this circuit, you are going to have this to be I2. And then this to be I1. Okay, so now let's find I2 and I1. Okay, so using the current division rule, we are going to have we are going to have I1. Okay, let's name it I1B. Okay, to be equal to 3.6. Okay, times 6 over 2 plus what 6. Okay, so let's see what you're going to get. 3.6 times 6 over 2 plus 6. Okay, so that gives us a value of what? 2.7 amperes. Okay, so let me write that down. So I1B will be equal to what? 2.7 amperes. Okay, so which means that we are going to have I2B, okay, to be equal to 3.6 minus what 2.7. So that'll be 3.6 minus 2.7. That'll give us a value of what 0 0.9 amperes. Okay, so I2B will be equal to 0 0.9 amperes. So I've gotten the current values for, for the various power sources, okay, when they were acting alone. So now we are going to sum up these values to get the actual current values that we want okay so now let's go ahead and then look at that okay so now let's find the actual current values okay so we're going to start with i1 you have i1 to be equal to i1 a plus i1 b okay so now let's look at something when we're considering the 10 volts only you could see that I1 was going in this direction, and then when we were considering the 15 amperes, it was going in this direction. So those are two opposite directions. Okay, I'm going to consider this to be a negative, and then this to be the positive direction. So what that means is that I1A will be a negative value. So you're going to have I1 to be equal to what? Minus 1.7 amperes plus 2.7 amperes. So this will give us I1 to be equal to. 1 amperes. So we have I1 to be equal to 1 ampere. Okay, so now let's do same for I2. Okay, so we have I2 to be equal to I2A plus I2B. Okay, so when we we're considering the 10 volts body source, this was the direction of I2. Okay, and then when we we're considering the 15 amperes, so this was the direction. So you can see that both directions are the same. Okay, so for that reason, you now have to negate any of the values. So we're going to have I2 to be equal to 0 0.9 plus 1 point. Okay, this this way rather 1.1 plus 0 0.9. Okay, so this will give us I2 to be equal to 
2 amperes okay so i2 will be 2 amperes so let's find i3 so i3 will be equal to i3 i3 a plus i3 b okay so now let's look at the directions also so when we're considering the 10 volt this was the direction and then when we're considering the 15 amperes this was the direction and they are opposite okay so what the other means is that i3 a will be a negative value so we're going to have i3 to be equal to minus 0 0.6 plus 0 0.6 okay so this will give us i3 to be equal to 3 amperes okay so now let's look at i4 so for i4 we are going to have i4 to be equal to i4a plus i4b okay and then when we're considering the 10 volts what is so this was the direction and then for the 15 amperes so this was the direction so you can see that the directions are the same so you have to add those values without negating any of them okay so we are going to have 0 0.6 amperes plus 11.4 okay so this will give us i4 to be equal to 12 amperes okay so we're going to have i4 to be equal to 12 amperes 